Thank you for the invitation. Yeah. You're wonderful, beautiful. So the question has become clear, uh, and thanks for answering the other questions. I would say what I'm looking for is to be able to get past years of seeing, for example, I would receive visions of things that would happen, right? And I would want to be an inventor. I would want to be part of that to make things happen. And it's like I'm putting things into the vortex that other people are taking out and, and benefiting from it. No one can snatch your vortex I content. Yeah, no, it's the feeling that I get. Look at it this way. So you put it into your vortex. Did you hear the example earlier of Jerry saying to Esther, it's time for us to clean up our sense of well-being in the monster bus because that's the second accident we've seen this week and we're used to not seeing any and we're getting closer to something that we may not want. So let's remind ourselves how stable we are in this big rig. Well, in a similar way, in the reverse way, what we're saying to you is when you see other people taking out of the vortex what you want, that means you're closer. You're witnessing a manifestation. It's not your own manifestation, but you are witnessing a manifestation. Mm -hmm. So then ask yourself, what's tugging at you? What is the pinch? What is the uncomfortable pinch? Well, it comes from, we love you so much, <laughs> a belief in shortage consciousness. Like there's this finite amount and if somebody else is getting it, they're getting what I should be getting. And that's never the case. Yes. So for me, it's been like I've, since a child, I wanted to be an inventor. Yes. Right. And I would see inventions and things and technology and other things happening. And I could see the logical progression and not be able to be a part of that or attain it or manifest it myself. And so now... My pinch is the frustration. Well, back off from the word inventor just for a little while. Give it a month. Back off from the word inventor and replace it with the word creator. Because it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's just that as you're thinking of being an inventor, you're standing in a place where others are looking at you. And you're at the end result with the invention already achieved. Where when you are thinking of being the creator inventor, you're enjoying the process of things occurring to you. Mm. Be a theorist for a little while longer. Like Einstein. He just dreamed stuff up and assigned the math to others. So my follow-up question to that is, so I've been in places where I take inspired action and at some point in time the inspired action becomes effort and I don't know when it happens and becomes effort and then it becomes well, resistance. You're just taking action too soon because inspired action, we're going to use a few sentences to describe to you what inspired action feels like. An idea comes to you, seems like sort of out of the blue, it's really out of your vortex. The idea comes to you and the minute the idea comes, it seems like a really good one and you feel enthusiastic about it. So then you feel so compelled by it that you must follow it. You don't know where it's going to lead. You don't even care where it's going to lead, but you have to follow it. And what you're picking up on is the enthusiasm of your inner being who knows you're on the trail and knows where the trail is going to lead. But when you push it yourself, when you want to feel that way, but aren't, it's like pushing a noodle. So what you're wanting to isolate to identify within yourself is the difference between wanting it so much that you're making it happen. It's the difference between motivation and inspiration. Motivation is me wanting to do it. So I'm making my list, I'm checking it off and I'm just going to make myself do it even though it doesn't feel like it's the logical thing. And inspiration is where you just feel so inspired to do it that you don't even care who you're in trouble with. You don't care if you don't show up for work. You don't care if you forgot to pick up the kids. You don't care about anything. This was just more important to do. It's that feeling of compelling enthusiasm and we know you have felt that we know that you've felt that many times as ideas are flowing to you did you feel it when we said feel the difference between standing with the completion and being proud of it and being just bowled over by the unfolding of it so we're going to lay a big one on you 
No invention is ever finished. It's never finished. The really good ones just keep you alive forever. It's like just something to think about, just something to think about. A new approach, a new avenue, a new direction, a new opportunity with a world of people around you to feed you with your perfect timing because you're so happy in the process. An idea that you never thought of before, but because you've converged with that idea, with that person in that situation, you saw it different right now. So now we're going to tell you some more things. You are the creator. We've been telling you all that. But you're also the creation. You are the creator creating the creation. And you know what the creation is? Happily creating. It's the process of something new occurring. Feels a little funny at first. Figure it out. Line up with it. Find the feeling place of it. Find out if there's any real juice in it. If there is, follow it. Why? For fun. Not for being an inventor, for fun. For the joy of utilizing the energy that creates worlds for the idea that you gave birth to. And if at some point in time, because this is my fear that happens, at some point in time, the inspired action, the inspiration, let's say stops or takes a pause, you know, like a... Well, it's all right. It'll you know, peter out from time to time. It's all right. It's all right. Just let it rest till it comes back. Mm -hmm. Just let it rest. Don't try to make it happen. Just say, that's good for now. That's good for now. You watch us as you see us on the stage with people. We can go so far with some and further with others. There's no point in pushing anything further than anybody is ready to receive it. And your inner being lovingly knows what you're ready to receive. We have a few questions for you. Let's find out what you're ready to receive. <laughs> so, how does the sentence or the statement, if not me, who? How does that feel to you? If not me inventing it, then who? Why not me? How does that feel to you? It's me. Yeah. 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 I ought to be able to do this. I am worthy of doing this. I'm smart enough to do this. I really, really, really want to do this. I got source at my back. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. Jerry liked to fish. He liked to stream fish. And he cut the barbs off the hooks so he'd catch the fish because they had fun together and then he'd let them go. And so Jerry and Esther and I spent some time on the Bitter River. And the stream was wide and then it was narrow and then it was wide and then it was narrow. And sometimes they wanted to go slow so they'd paddle over to the wider part. And sometimes they want to go faster so they'd paddle over to where the current is. And that's sort of what you're doing with your thoughts. In other words, you get to be as general and therefore slow things down or specific and then speed things up. But you don't want to speed things up unless you know you're headed in the river toward where you want to go. So if out of angst or out of disappointment or out of frustration, you're digging in and trying to make it go faster, it works against you. That's the time to just slow it down, give yourself some space, everything in good time. I'm good at this. Get into a general place. And when you can feel you're really onto something, then speed it up, get more specific. We want you to know there isn't anybody more capable of doing anything than you. Thank you. Yeah. Enough.